James Blunt is James the Wine Guy. Stay tuned for a review of this beautiful wine. It is a Monica de Sardinia wine. So here's what we have before us. It is from the producer Arjolas, and you'll see here it's from the Perdera, and the Perdera is the vineyard site. And so this is a Monica de Sardegna wine, and uh, in order to be called a DOC, the Denominazione di Origine Controllata, you know, it has to be termed as such. And this is a 2011 vintage, 13.5% uh, ABV wine. This is 90% Monica, 5% Carignano, and 5% Bovali Sardo. And uh, so on a map, I want to show you this region because I think it's a region, it's been a crossroads in the Mediterranean for many a culture and civilization. Um, and I think it's really important to get, uh, you know, that identification. While it is certainly a part of Italy, uh, the Sardinia dialect is slightly different than, uh, say, mainland Italian. But it's also a really great rich tradition of uh, different varieties you're not going to find on the mainland of Italy. So you're not going to find, uh, say for example, the Monica grape. You're not going to find uh, often the Grenache or the uh, kind of now. And uh, so with that is a really beautiful food culture. And uh, so this wine spends eight to ten months in French oak. And uh, so I definitely want to show you on a map where this region is located. So here you go. You're going to see on this map here, Monica de Sardegna is uh, allowed through the entire island as well as, say, the Canal de Sardegna and the uh, Vermentino as well. So the Vermentino de Sardegna uh, is different, so shall we say, than the Vermentino uh, the Galura DOCG, so a different significance and in this region. This is the only place that uh, this designation can be utilized and uh, the wine grapes farmed from this particular region as well. So I think it's really important to put that uh, familiarity and also it's just really nice to, to get a stroll if you will through the island to understand uh, the differences in, in this beautiful culture, great food culture, wine culture, and a very historical place as well. So let me pour a little more in my wine glass. There we go. And uh, for me, this is a really beautiful wine. I think that the Monica grape is a really beautiful, um, definitively different, a lighter style, um, light to mid-body style. And I think what's really nice about this is the Monica gives a certain sense of uh, dryness. So the Monica grape is characterizing in a very dry manner and also a very tart manner. But it's also not going to be comparable at all to a Sangiovese. Uh, but for me, it's a fantastic variety to enjoy with food or without. So uh, scent characteristics on this wine include uh, gorgeous notes of bean, cherry, pomegranate, a bit of forest floor, additionally uh, notes of uh, juniper, suede, and uh, leather bound books. So here we go next with the flavor characteristics and a point score. Beautiful notes of red, black, cherry, black plum, chili ancho, hint of violets, a bit of white mushroom, nutmeg, and bay leaf. Um, the earthiness combined with a bit of that uh, chili sweet spice flavor characteristic and uh, the tart notes of the cherry and uh, the black plum center it. Beautiful wine. This is a 9.1 out of my 10.0 scale. Now think of this as 91 points out of 100 points. And, uh, you know, it's been a great year. This has been an amazing year, 2014. Not my best tasting year yet. My best video uh, production year. And uh, for me, this is, uh, you know, for the first half of the year has been really exciting and enthralling. The second half is just turning out to be the same thing. Thank you so much for watching. I'm on most social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo, Google+, Pinterest, LinkedIn, as well as Instagram. Thank you so much for following. And uh, please uh, give a like. And also, please share this video. Give your questions and comments below. And I'll put more information on the producer down below as well. And thank you so much for watching. Salute.